Hello lovely crafters. Today I'm going to teach you how to resize a paper piece pattern using my new simple five pointed star pattern. Some people have requested something more simple than my spinning five pointed star pattern so this is it. It has multiple sizes from two inches through ten inches. It also has a ten centimeter and twenty centimeter version in the pattern and instructions for both Imperial and the metric system on how to customize your size based on the 20 centimeter or 10 inch block. But first, <laughs> I would really like to thank everyone who's watching this video, who's liked, who subscribed to my channel. It is so exciting for me to actually have viewers and I hope that you find my content useful. You have my sincere gratitude and I hope that you will join me in the future for more videos because I'm, I'm having a good time with that. Hi guys, it's me, Sheila, from Seaside Snuggles Quilts, Patterns, and Crafts, and I have a new star pattern coming out. I've had a lot of people request specific sizes of stars and for a simpler paper piece pattern for a star, so now I have this pattern that's coming out. It's going to be a 10 inch paper piece star, which is this one that's solid yellow. But what I want to show you here is how to resize really any paper piece pattern so that um, you can make whatever size you want. So I made this 10 inches because it fits on two sheets of paper and because 10 is easy to work with when you want to resize. So for any size smaller than the 10 inch star, all you have to do is multiply the finished size star that you want by 10. So for me to get this six inch star, all I did was multiply six by 10 to get 60, and then I printed my pages at 60%. The only other thing that you have to remember other than that is that if your paper piece pattern has a seam allowance in the pattern, you'll need to adjust that seam allowance after the fact. So, for example, this is my pattern at 70%, making a seven inch star. And the only adjustment I need to make to this is I'm gonna use a blue Sharpie and my ruler, and I'm gonna redraw my quarter inch line away from the dotted line because your seam allowance shrinks when you shrink your pattern and you won't get a full quarter inch. So what you need to do is go into the seam allowance line or dotted line in this case and redraw your seam allowance. So I'm just measuring a quarter inch from the dotted line on the top and the right all the way around my pattern whatever the shape is i'm just laying the quarter inch line right on that dotted line and i'm drawing a new seam allowance so that i have a quarter inch seam allowance let me do that on both halves it's right on the dotted line on the right and at the top or on the left and at the top if you're left-handed. Give myself two new lines. And I do it in a different color so that I can know the new line from the old line. Just using a blue in this case. And now this is ready for me to make a seven inch star from the 10 inch pattern. If I want to make my pattern larger, I have the formula in the pattern itself, <clears throat> but what you need to do is you print out the 10 inch pattern. 
and then you want to cut it out along the dotted lines but you want to leave the dotted lines on the pattern so when you place your ruler to cut this out place it so that the dotted line is under the ruler and you can serve that that line all the way around and I'll put these numbers up on the screen but for anything over 16 inches if you're going to print on regular letter size paper you're going to need to divide this up so let's say that I wanted to make a 15 inch star starting with this 10 inch block then I want to multiply 15 times 10 to give me hundred and fifty percent that's how much I'm going to need to blow up this pattern but it's not going to fit because the 10 inch pattern takes up the whole sheet so the next thing I need to do is figure out how many pieces I need to separate this into to print it if I want a 15 oops a 15 inch block I like to keep my printing within eight inches um, so that any border that I need will show up on the paper still. So I divide this by eight and that gives me one with the remainder of seven, right? So I need to divide this. I'm gonna round this number up to the next even number which is two. That means I need it to be two pieces wide. Well, this is already in halves, so I'm good to go as far as the width goes. Now, I also need to divide it by my maximum height. And I like to use 10 inches. It gives me an inch all the way around and room for the paper to feed for my height. So again, I'm going to divide 15 by 10. That's one with a remainder of five. This one I don't need to round to the ne next even number, but I do need to round it to the next number. So this is going to be two as well. So I need it to be two wide by two tall. That means that each half I need to fold in half before I take it to a copy machine. And when I take it to the copy machine, I'm gonna, let's say that, on the scanner, this is the top corner of a page. When you place your piece on there, because it's gonna blow up, you wanna place it about a quarter to a half an inch away from that top corner on the scanner. So when it blows up, it'll fill up this space. It'll blow up out this way, okay? So if this is your scanner, and this is where the corner of your page would normally go, bring it out about a quarter of an inch so that the scanner can catch these dotted lines in the scan and then blow it up the amount that you need to blow it up. So in this case, I scanned the right side on one side, and then I flipped it over and scanned the other side so that I could get these two pages. So from here, in this scan, it caught my fold. So you can see that line there. On this scan, it didn't catch the fold. So what I want to do is I want to cut on the line that I can see. Like so. And then I take a piece of tape 
line up my lines and I tape across here. So I forgot to get my tape, hold one. Okay, and then I'm gonna tape this down, avoiding the actual sew lines because those are gonna to need to rip, so you don't want tape on there because it'll make it harder to rip from your fabric. So I'll tape here. And one more piece of tape right here. All right, so now I have this tape together. And the last thing I need to do is I need to add my quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So I'm gonna do it just like I did before. I'm gonna put the quarter inch line on the dotted line. And I'm gonna draw a quarter inch away. That's where you want to leave this dotted line on there for your reference. And when in doubt, cheat to the outside because you can always cut away if it's too big. But you may lose your points if it's too small. Last but not least, just go ahead and mark this for a 15 inch star. And if you wanted to verify from the dotted line, this is nine inches plus six inches. Oop, that was a little short. So I give you a 15 inch star, half of one. All right, you also might want to um, clip away the excess, fat, uh, excess paper before you paper piece, because that'll make it a little difficult to um, tear away. But then you're ready to go. So I'll set that aside. But to show you how great this star looks in a seven inch, I'm gonna show you how I piece that together. So you see I've already drawn my uh, seam allowance around the outside. Now I'm just gonna rough cut this out of the paper. This is one of those patterns that I do recommend using freezer paper for. I will link that video because there's a step here where it helps a lot if you can press the seams in a direction that is different from how it's going to naturally land. And if you use the freezer paper method, you can just press that seam as you go rather than clip it at the end. So let me put a mark on here that this is seven inches finished. All right, so these are my two halves. Remember that your paper piece pattern is in reverse. And for this pattern, I wanna do the inside in this blue fabric and the outside in this striped fabric because, you know, Independence Day is coming up. My method for cutting fabric to size is to measure my biggest piece, which is for the blue, number four on both sides, and they're symmetrical, so I only need to measure it once. And I wanna make sure that I have enough fabric to cover the shape, which in this case, let me do it from this side. To the seam allowance is about two and a half, just a little short of two and a half. So I'm going to add um, a half inch to that. The shape itself was about two inches. So I'm gonna do three inches so I have plenty. 
So I'm gonna cut a three inch strip here. And just to check, this will also work for a three inch strip. So that will get both of my pieces there. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is just a rough cutout for paper piecing. All right, so I'm gonna use that three inch strip. And then I need a strip for, that will cover all of this. Now, I'm doing a little live experiment here where I wanna see if I can make the stripes be horizontal all the way across this. So I'm just gonna mark on each of the background pieces what horizontal is and see if we can make that work. So I know that I need a piece that is going to be this wide. This is the widest piece. This is the tallest piece. So this half is a little more than three and a half. It's four. So it's four to my seam allowance pieces. Um, I am going to go ahead with four and a half, and that will give me plenty, give me a quarter inch off the paper. Let's just go with five. We'll go with five to be safe. All right, so I'm gonna cut myself a five inch piece of the stripes. I know I should iron this, but I'm not going to. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to get plenty of ironing as I go along. So I'm not that worried about it. All right. So for one side, we start with one up top and the other side, we start with one at the bottom. So I need to cut pieces that are big enough for, for that. So here's my number one for this side. I'm just gonna cut it that way. Remember that all of the pieces face away from your paper. So when you're cutting your, your sizes, um, you want to cut with your uh, fabric face down. So I need two pieces for the number one, number three slot over there. And I am oversizing them just to make sure that I can get things lined up. So I have those two pieces to cut. All right. And then I need a piece down here at the bottom that I need to be horizontal. So I'm gonna go ahead, normally I would just see what scraps I have left, but because I'm trying to face this a very specific way, I'm gonna go ahead and cut pieces for this little part number five. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Those are all of my background pieces, and now I need to cut my foreground pieces. And again, they're symmetrical, so I can just cut two at a time. I'm not gonna worry about cutting away the seam allowance. This one, I just wanna make sure that I have enough. So I'm gonna cut it this way. And then this piece needs to be tall enough. I'm gonna cut it that way. All right, so I have all my pieces pre-cut. The next thing I need to do is fold my pattern sections. Let's get my iron heating up here because I do wanna iron them before I start sewing. So for these, I like to fold on all the lines. Give them nice sharp pieces 
and all the way across the paper, even if the line doesn't go all the way across the paper. So I'm folding all of these first with the print out. Just so I can see that I actually have that black line. Oop, I messed that one up. There we go. And all the way across. And one more fold here. All right, all the way across. After I have all of this line sewn, I mean folded, I'm gonna go back holding the paper in the air instead of on the table where I can mess up my crease. And I just fold them in the opposite direction, which is towards the front of the paper because it's easier to sew in the valley than on the mountain. So I'm gonna do that to my other half. And then we will iron. Our pieces of fabric and then we'll move over to well actually we'll pin these to the paper and then we'll move over to the sewing machine I want to see if I can do this real time just so you can see how simple it is and hopefully my batteries will last all right, so there's all my folds. Now I'm gonna fold them back the other way toward the paper. All right, so let me go get the plug to plug in my phone. That's gonna die on me very shortly. And then we'll iron these pieces. So we have our pieces, our paper pieces. I'm gonna move the, sorry for jiggling that. I'm gonna move these out of the way. I'm gonna move this out of the way so they have a space to iron here. And I'm gonna jiggle you again for just a moment. All right. So I'm just gonna iron all these pieces before I place them on my paper so they're nice and flat to start with. These stripes I'm gonna iron on the back side for now. They have like a little, it's almost like a vinyl to create the stripes here. It's strange, so I wanna be careful. Nice and flat, nice and flat. All right, so let's put our first pieces on. So in this case, let me mark my horizontal again. This, this, and this are my horizontal. So I'm gonna start with piece number one, which is gonna go face down behind our first piece, like so. And I am going to just use a little pin and pin that single piece on for right now. Then my number two piece is going to be one of these blue pieces. And that's going to go face up. And the way I place that is I fold this piece up. I bring it to, hold on, because I do want to try to get this lined up. So my seam is going to be on that red stripe. That I want to try to remember. Let's stick this pin through here momentarily. It's temporary. Okay. Let's move this back to center. Then this piece here, if you can see the triangle from the back, this is my next piece, which is number two. So I know that it's going to be oriented Ooh. first. I'm gonna cut my quarter inch seam allowance from the fold. This is easier to do without your pen in it. All 
All right, so here's my quarter inch seam allowance. Then I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna place it underneath my shape, lining up the seam allowance, like so. Then I'm gonna put my finger on each intersection to check that I have full coverage of the blue underneath my triangle, which I do. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna stick in this case, I'm going to go ahead and stick two pins in it because I want to keep this from twisting and I can't see the blue like so. The next thing I want to do is my number one piece here. Remember, it's going to be face down. And I want to place it so that my stripes are horizontal. And I'm going to place this down, fold over for my number two piece, and then I'm going to cut my quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna pause you for just one moment, and I'll be back. Okay, I had to stop for a moment. So we've uh, cut our fabric a quarter inch away from the fold. And then we're going to take our star point, which is this shape here, number two, and we're gonna place it behind there so that the two fabrics are lined up and I've got coverage all the way around this triangle. So I can see here I've got it, here I've got plenty. I just want to check here and make sure I have more than a quarter inch beyond that point, and I do. So I'm going to hold this. I'm going to open it up and put a couple pins in here. Parallel to my seam line so I don't have to stop to pull them out. And then we're going to sew. Okay. So we're gonna get this sewn together now. I'm gonna start off of the edge, which is outside the blue line, and get myself lined up with my stitch line. This is regular paper, so I'm stitching through. And I need to get my stitch length. I'm gonna put it about a 1.6 so that the paper is more perforated and easier to pull away. keep sewing about a quarter inch beyond the end of my line. Now the next piece is going to get sewn all the way across. Then about a quarter inch beyond the end of my line. And I need you over at the iron. We'll have the next pieces. Okay, so now we're going to take our pins out, which we'll be using again. So I'm just going to set them aside. My iron is not yet hot. So while it's heating up, I'm just going to trim away some extra strings there. Alright, so now these are going to get ironed this way. Yeah. Here we go. Give it a nice press. I can't help but use the steam. Let me turn it off because that is just my weird habit. All right, so now those are ironed flat. I'm gonna to go to the third part and I'm going to gently pop away those stitches so I can fold on the fold. I'm gonna use my ruler to cut a quarter inch away from that fold. Okay, same thing on this piece, number three. 
gently popping those seams quarter inch from the fold and I'm going to cut this away all right so the next piece that I need is number three on this one which is this shape my stripes need to go this way so I need to cover this whole section so I'm going to grab my large piece of stripes and I'm going to lay the stripes in the direction that I need them to be in as I lay this piece down so I've got my stripes in the correct direction the piece that I'm covering is this large piece here and looks like I'm good to go so I'm going to go ahead and cut this seam allowance you could cut it after if you like then I'm going to open this up and I'm going to stick two pins in to keep it from rotating get the next section. This is my number three piece for this section. Is this piece large enough? It is. But I'll go ahead and use the big piece. That needs a little ironing. One moment. Alright. So I'm going to line this up. with my horizontal. I can see my line there. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that as well. Two pins to keep it from shifting. and then to the machine. All right, so we're gonna sew this one. Starting off the paper. And stitch about a quarter inch beyond that with my presser foot. And this is nothing's folded there. The next seam, just get myself lined up. Okay, about a quarter inch beyond that line as well. We'll cut this away. Head right back to the iron. My extra strings here. Take out my pins and we'll press again. See, we're doing pretty good. We're still horizontal. I cannot help but use the steam. I've got an issue. Okay, we're still horizontal because we've made those marks to let us know. One thing I didn't do was go like red, white, red, white. I might have wanted to pay atten better attention to that, which I will make note of for next time. So now both pieces are ready for part four. So I'm gonna gently pop these stitches so that I can fold completely over on point four. I'm going to use my quarter inch seam allowance, cut this extra fabric away, I'm going to get this piece that I have cut for this section, and I'm going to get myself lined up like so. I can see all the way around that I've got plenty, so I'm just going to open it up. Give myself two pins, 
parallel to my stitch line. This one's going to be a long stitch line. Same thing on the other half. I'm going to gently pop these seams that cross this line. Fold our pattern back. I need to pull it away a little bit more so we can get a nice flat fold. I'm going to cut a quarter inch seam allowance. Line up our piece. Make sure we have at least quarter inch all the way around. Open that up and stick our pins in. So we see that my fold was a little bit over from the stitch line. So I'm going to just give this a little bit of a twist just to make sure that I have enough seam allowance when I actually stitch on that line versus where I folded it. All right, back to the sewing machine. Set that seam, then open this up. I'm going to set this seam, and then open this up. And then we'll prepare for the last pieces that we're going to add. So the next piece is going to be number five. I'm going to pop those stitches very gently. Cut it away. So I have a quarter inch seam allowance. Set that aside. Now I can see, I don't know if you can see through the paper, but this is the shape and this is my horizontal line on this piece. So when I lay this down, I need the horizontal section to be like this. So I'm just going to keep that in mind. As I'm placing this down, and I'm going to put my finger here and see if these are horizontal. Well, it's pretty horizontal. <coughs> so I'm going to push that back out and put two pins in and get ready to sew this part. I could put the seams right on the seam allowance and then unfold it to check it. I'll do that on the next piece. So same thing here. I'm going to fold on number five after gently popping the stitches that go through this stitch line like that. I'm going to cut away my seam allowance and I'm going to get my triangular piece of fabric. And this is my um, horizontal line on this piece. So I want to line it up so that those stripes line up with my horizontal line. And that looks pretty good, but I can check before I stitch it by sticking pins in right on my stitch line. I'm going to stick two pins in right on the stitch line. 
and then I'm going to take a peek at my placement and see if this is going to end up with some horizontal lines and it is I don't know if I'm good enough to shift this down to line up my red and my white stripes so I'm not going to attempt it on this one but maybe I'll cut a, a bigger piece of fabric oh do I want to try it I do kind of want to try it let's see it's not going to be easy shift it down like this this is going to be my intersection nope it's not going to be there here it will so shift it right a little bit I don't know how that's going to be but we're going to give it a shot okay give it a shot I don't know I'm not very confident that that's gonna line up and I'm not very patient right now <laughs> all right so we're gonna sew this last piece on each half of the star pattern and then we can sew both halves together all right that's one half and then this is the half the right side that we are going to See if we matched up our strings. <laughs> All right. Take that off the machine. Pull our pins out. We'll need two pins for the next part. So we have all of our sections sewn on to the halves. We're going to iron this flat. This is the right side. This is the one I tried to line up. Oh, not great. Not great. <laughs> but maybe with practice, I could get some continuous lines all the way across. Okay, I'm going to give this an iron. The next thing we need to do is we need to cut around the outside of each section onto the blue line, which is our new seam allowance. We're just going to get that lined up. And I cut to the outside of the lines because I tend to sew a little fat. So that kind of compensates for the way that I sew. But if you're a very accurate piecer, then you can like cut down in the middle of the line. But I like to leave the line on. So here's one half of my star. Not too shabby. We'll get the other half of the star. Then we'll sew both halves together and we'll be all done. There's the two halves that are going to be sewn together. We've got our stripes going horizontally. That worked out. So now to remove the paper. I like to remove my paper uh, in reverse order. So I'm going to start with five. I run my fingernail across the stitch line and it comes off pretty easily. Then piece number four. Didn't come off super clean, but that's okay. Piece number three is next. And we can get the rest of number four off of there. Piece number two. And piece number one should just pull right out of there. 
All right, so that was my right side. Now I have some notes on the pattern that you might not have noticed, but it says to clip right here at number on number four, right above the stitch line, you want to clip it, leaving about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. Then we want to take this back to the iron and we want to iron the top part of this in the opposite direction. So this is going to go to the left and you can use some steam on that. And then the last seam that we stitched between four and five, we also want to flip to the other direction. This will make sense in just a moment. Okay. So on my right side, which will be my right side facing me, it's marked the right side on the pattern. You want to clip this seam, press it to the left, and then you want to press your last seam, which is between four and five, in the opposite direction. All right, so that piece is ready. I'm going to take the paper off of this side. And again, I'm going to go in reverse order, Just using my fingernails. Number three. Let's release it from down there first. Number two. And number one. All of these seam allowances can stay as they come off the paper. So you have your right side and your left side. You're going to flip your right side on top of the left side. And because we just ironed this part of the seam allowance in the opposite direction, it will nest with the bottom to give you a nice star point at the top. And you want to pin that at a quarter of an inch from the sew edge. Then on the bottom, because we flipped this seam, that will also nest. And we're going to pin that between the seams at a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the seam allowance. And now we're going to go back to the sewing machine, sew this together, iron our block, and we'll be all done. Okay, so we're back at the machine, and this is our last seam to finish this block. So we are pinned. We're going to start with a quarter inch seam allowance. You might have a little bit of difficulty getting started with that pin right there. So don't be afraid to lift your presser foot, move it a little bit, go slowly, remove your pin before you sew over it. Oh, I forgot I could change my stitch length back to my normal stitch length, just in case I have to take this apart. I don't want to have those teeny tiny stitches. the bottom part of the star. Remove the pin before you stitch over it. Line up the bottom seam and finish up. Now we'll go to the iron and see how it looks. All right, I'm gonna give it a press to set my stitches. Remove this little tiny piece of paper still there. Let's open it up and see. Look at that. Look at how nice those points look. So I'm giving a little press from the front, then I'm going to turn it over and I want to open this last seam just to give it a nice flat finish from the front. Some steam on that open seam. And there we have it. There's our new star. Uh -huh, very patriotic. So, what we've learned on this class is how to turn a 10 inch paper piece pattern into any smaller size that you want. 
or how to turn it into a larger size if you like and make all the stars you can stand. So I hope you enjoyed this class and that you will recycle your paper. If you use freezer paper, you can just iron those seams as you go in the opposite direction. But um, I hope you found this useful. You'll find the pattern for this star in my Etsy shop linked below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments below. I'll get back to them as soon as possible. Have a great week. You're all done. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you made your star. Nothing makes me happier than to see people's projects that they've created with my patterns. So if you'd like to share those with me, please tag me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I will leave that information down below along with the link to this pattern in the store. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to answer them. And I hope you see you in the next video.